sea of candlelight at an emotional vigil in Charlottesville, Virginia. It was a remarkable act of healing and unity. The procession followed the same route of the neo-Nazi torchlight parade that triggered last weekend's violence. Remarkably, Wednesday night's event was spontaneous, spread by word of mouth, and kept off social media for fear the neo-Nazis would hear of it and disrupt it. This is a turning point. Yeah, this is this is a better place to be. Meanwhile, the fallout over the president's response to the violence keeps coming. The New York Times reports that the president's top advisors are stunned, despondent, and numb. Donald Trump is going to have a very difficult time to recover from his handling of this event, if he can recover at all. CBS News White House and senior foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan is at Bedminster, New Jersey, where President Trump is staying. You actually have a president who is in many ways being isolated and going with his gut and dis discounting and dismissing some of the advice of his top aides to really try to quiet the controversy that he has started. The nation's top generals and admirals are also speaking out on social media in what's seen as a stunning rebuke to the commander in chief. The United States Navy forever stands against intolerance and hatred. No place for racial hatred or extremism in the United States Marine Corps. The Army doesn't tolerate racism, extremism, or hatred. President Trump is the commander in chief, and here you have the five branches of the armed forces almost speaking out against him. Every single U.S. military branch leader has condemned the rhetoric and the hate speech and the hate groups. They have not. They have stopped short of criticizing the president. A message of unity echoed on the streets of Charlottesville. And the 